Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to consider what happens to a coil when it's connected to a DC supply and to an AC supply. We're going to carry out an experiment in the early stages and we'll see something interesting that happens between the two different supplies when it's applied to this coil. And then we're going to figure out why that's happening and then do some calculations to tell us some key information about what's happening with this coil. So just to explain the setup that we've got going on here, we've got a DC supply connected up over here. Now normally with the Loctronics kit you would plug your DC supply into the front of this. I've got a different supply coming in this time because I need to very accurately control the voltage that's being supplied to this. Uh, but I've got this left in just so that you can see that this is the DC supply. And then down here we've got an AC supply. Now the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that the DC supply and the AC supply correspond to each other. So we need to make sure that they're the same and we're going to make sure that they're the same when they're connected under load. So we'll bring the load in, connect it up and we'll measure the voltages and make sure that they are both the same. So we're just going to complete these two circuits by bringing these two additional points in there and then I'm going to connect up the coil across the two supplies. So first of all I'm going to connect it to the AC supply and just make sure that we're absolutely 100% switched on there. And then I'm going to measure the voltage that we're applying to this coil. Now, the sharp-eyed among you may have noticed that uh, what we've got here is actually a transformer. So we've got uh, a two to one transformer connected in this configuration, but we're not really interested in the output side of this transformer for this experiment. We're simply using the primary side, the input side, just to kind of help us understand uh, what's happening when we connect this coil to the two different types of supply. So ignore the fact that it's got a secondary winding, that's not going to make any difference to what we're doing here. We're just using this because it is a coil that will give us some nice readings that we can translate. So let's figure out what the voltage is going to be. Now in order to do that I'm going to set up my Mega AVO 835 and I'm going to connect this up so that I've got uh, the voltage across here in parallel. So I'm going to connect my voltmeter in parallel. So first of all, just make sure that it's on AC, which it is, and then I'll just connect it up across the two ends there. And you can see that what we're measuring there is 15.5 volts. Yeah, so 15 and a half volts we're going to go with. So I'm just going to make a note of that. So we've got the AC voltage is 15.5 volts. So just make a note of that because we'll need that information in a moment. Right, now let's do the DC current. So I'm going to disconnect my test equipment. I'm going to move my coil up to here. And then I'm going to change the settings on my multimeter. So it's measuring AC at the moment. If I press the mode button, it changes it to DC. So I'm going to now measure the DC voltage that we've got across here. So I'll measure from there to there. And there's nothing there because I haven't turned the supply on yet. So let's turn the supply on. And you can see there that we've got 13 volts. But what I really want to do is I want to make sure that what we get here is an accurate reading. So I'm going to change this to 15 volts. I'm just going to tune this up so that we're applying 15 volts to our coil. So there we go, 15.5 volts. So we're happy with that. Right, so we will now disconnect our meter and we're just going to disconnect the coil as well so to make this as fair a test as possible. So we've got 15 and a half volts DC and 15 and a half volts AC. Now bear in mind this is 15 and a half volts AC and that is the RMS value which basically means that this is 15 and a half volts which is equivalent in AC to 15 and a half volts in DC. We use the RMS value of AC to compare AC to DC supplies. So these are equivalent supplies in terms of their voltage settings. What we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at inserting our coil into the circuit and then we're going to measure the current that flows through it for the DC supply and for the AC supply. So let's set that up now. So I'm going to connect up my coil. So current is going to pass through here, through my mega, which I'm now going to turn into an ammeter. So I'm going to change this to measure amperes. So that's now set to measure amperes. I'm going to plug that in that side. And when I connect this up into the circuit, 
we should get a current reading. So let's plug that in and see what current reading we get. Uh, now it doesn't help that we're in AC, so I need to change that to DC again and see what the reading is that we get. So we get 132 milliamps. So that's 132 milliamps. So the current on the DC is 132 milliamps. Now, we're going to move the coil onto the DC supply. So that's now connected up into the DC supply, and we're going to measure the current flow through there. But before we measure that, just think about this. We've got the same coil connected to the same voltage outputs, to the equivalent voltage outputs. This is DC and this is AC. So the same coil connected to the same uh, voltage. What would you think that the current would be here? Do you think it will be higher? Do you think it will be lower? Do you think it will be the same? Well, let's plug it in and we'll figure out what we're going to get. So I'm going to connect up here now. This is set to AC. So we'll change that to AC there, and we'll measure what the current flow is. So the current flow through here now is 33.6 milliamps. So now we've got 33.6 milliamps. So that is interesting because we've got the same voltage connected to the same coil. The only difference is this is DC and this is AC. And yet for some reason we are getting a much smaller current flowing through the coil when we've got it connected up to an AC supply. Now, why do you think that is? Well, to answer that question, we need to think about the difference between AC and DC electricity. Let's take our coil and plug it back into the DC supply. Now try and visualize what's happening with the DC supply. We've got current flowing through here, through the coil, and back out of the circuit again. And in a DC supply, the current keeps going the same way all the time. It's just always going in the same direction. Now what that means is that around this coil, a magnetic field will appear, but that magnetic field will just stay still. It's not fluctuating, it's not moving, it's not reversing its polarity. And therefore, as far as the supply is concerned, this isn't doing anything else to the electricity. However, if we take this coil and we connect it to the AC supply, what we've now got is a situation where the current is flowing backwards and forwards through the coil. What difference does that make? Well, think about what's happening with the magnetic field around this coil. It's expanding and collapsing and expanding and collapsing all the time. And as it expands and collapses, it cuts back across the coil that created it in the first place. And as it cuts back across the coil that created it in the first place, it generates electricity back inside there. But the current that's generated back inside the coil is trying to push in the opposite direction to the current that is creating it in the first place. So what we've got is two currents that are trying to oppose each other. They're going in opposite directions. Now, the effect of that is that the applied current is always larger than the generated current, and that means that the applied current will always kind of win. However, it will be much reduced, so the current flowing through the circuit gets smaller. And that's the type of opposition to current flow that we've discussed in another video in this series called inductive reactance. So when the coil is connected, to a DC supply, it has no inductive reactance because the magnetic field around this coil just stays still. However, when we move this coil into an AC supply, what happens then is that the coil generates inductive reactance, a new type of opposition to current flow. And that combines with the resistance that is inside the coil to create impedance, which is the total opposition to current flow inside an AC circuit. So when we connect our coil up to the DC supply, we only have the resistance of the coil causing an opposition to current flow. However, when we connect it into the AC supply, we have the combined effect of resistance and inductive reactance, and that creates impedance. And because it includes the resistance of the coil, the impedance in this circuit will be bigger than the resistance in this circuit. So because we have a bigger opposition to current flow in the coil when it's connected to the AC supply than we do when it's connected to the DC supply, it means that less current flows 
around the AC circuit. Now what's absolutely remarkable about this is we've recorded kind of three different numbers. We've recorded the voltage and we said it was the same for the AC and the DC circuit and we've recorded two different currents. Now if I just give you one more piece of information, if I tell you that this circuit, uh, the AC supply to this circuit has a time period of 20 milliseconds we can calculate now an enormous amount of information about this coil. In fact, you wouldn't believe the amount of stuff we can calculate about it just based on four different numbers. We're going to be able to calculate the resistance of the coil, the impedance of the coil, the inductive reactance of the coil, the inductance of it. We'll be able to calculate the power factor of this circuit, the phase angle of it. We'll be able to produce a waveform to show the relationship between the voltage and the current inside this circuit. We'll also be able to figure out what size capacitor we need to install in here in order to correct the power factor. So we can extract a huge amount of information just based on those four numbers. And we'll take care of that in our next video.